Hi, I'm Dan Music. I've been training mechanics in the door and dock industry since 1980. In this video, you'll see how mechanical dock levers work. Working on mechanical dock levers is dangerous. At the end of the video, there's a link to safety. You need to follow that link and pay careful attention. The purpose of a dock leveler is to bridge the gap between a loading dock and the bed of a truck or trailer. The simplest way to do this is with a dock plate. These usually cost under $1,000, but they are heavy. Often forklifts are required to move them. Most are designed for low use and for load capacities under 1,000 pounds, but some designs support loads up to 25,000 pounds. A second option for bridging the gap is the edge of dock design. The price tag for these is several thousand dollars. These are easier to use than dock plates and they can handle loads up to 50,000 pounds. A third alternative is the dock leveler. These cost many times more than the edge of dock systems, but they are easier to use, they are more durable, and they offer the highest load capacities, up to 55,000 pounds. To support this load capacity, decks often weigh 2,000 pounds or more. Designing equipment to raise the deck from the center would require 2,000 pounds of force. To reduce this, the inside of the deck is hinged. And hinging the deck at the inside of the dock pit provides a smooth junction between the threshold of the dock pit and the deck of the leveler. Engineers have designed three types of lift, hydraulic, pneumatic or air, and mechanical. All share the same basic components, a deck, two hinges, and a lip. And all perform the same operations. They raise the deck, lift the lip, and lower the deck and lip. Next, they raise the deck, lower the lip, and then close the deck and lip. The three lifts differ in how they perform these operations. On hydraulic and air systems, pressing a single button activates a pump to raise the deck with hydraulic oil or with air. Most mechanical systems, on the other hand, use numerous parts which require pulling a chain to raise the deck and standing on the deck to lower it. All mechanical dock levelers counterbalance the weight of the deck and lip with springs. Unlike garage doors that balance throughout their travel, dock leveler decks normally balance only in the raised position, and they require the weight of the person operating the leveler to lower the deck. Then all that is needed is something to keep it closed. First we'll look at the two types of spring systems, and then ways to hold down the deck. After that, we'll look at methods for controlling the lip. To ease lifting, dock leveler manufacturers use two types of springs, extension and compression. An extension spring, when extended, pulls the ends together toward the center. A compression spring, when compressed, pushes the ends away from the center. Extension springs extend as a ramp is lowered, and they pull to lift or to counterbalance the weight of the deck. Engineers have designed a variety of systems to raise and counterbalance the deck. The more common, manufactured by McGuire, DLM, and others, uses a lifting arm hinged at the bottom with a roller at the top. A bolt from the extended springs pulls on the arm to raise the deck. The second type utilizes two arms joined in the middle. The top of the upper arm is fastened to the deck. The bottom of the other arm is mounted to the subframe. The springs pull on the center to lift the deck. A third design made by Wright Height uses springs mounted at one end to the subframe. At the other end, the springs pull on bars welded to the deck to counterbalance its weight. A compression spring compresses as the deck is lowered, and it pushes to lift or to counterbalance the weight of the deck. There are two compression spring systems. On circo levelers, the springs are mounted between two hinged plates. One end is mounted just under the deck, the other end is attached to the pit subframe. The springs are compressed and they push up on the deck to counterbalance the weight of the deck. Steel tubes inside the springs position them in place. Kelly uses a power pack, a single large compression spring hidden inside a metal casing which extends almost the full length of the deck. At each end of the spring is a plate that compresses the spring. The inside plate is secured to the frame. The outside plate is secured with a threaded rod and adjustable nut. This rod runs through the spring and connects to a bar under the deck. The compression of the spring lifts and counterbalances the deck as it presses against the outside plate, 
causing the bolt to pull the rear bar out and the ramp upward. The hold-down unit anchors the ramp down and even with the floor, or below it when necessary. Engineers have developed at least three types of control assemblies. The most common employs a ratchet bar and a pull mechanism with matching teeth to hold down the ramp. Pulling the control arm separates the teeth and the deck rises. Serco grips and releases their decks with interlocking gears. A third system uses a brake or clutch mechanism that grabs a cylinder to anchor the deck and to release it when needed. With any of these configurations, the operation is the same. When you pull the release chain, the hold-down unit disengages, allowing the springs to raise and counterbalance the deck in the open position. When you walk out to the edge of the deck, your weight causes it to drop, and the hold-down assembly restrains the deck, allowing you to step away. The lip bridges the gap between the deck of the leveler and the bed of the truck. It must rise to span the divide, and it must drop when not in use to prevent damage to the leveler when another truck backs up to the dock. Just as the weight of the deck requires a counterbalance force, so the weight of the lip requires a counterbalance force. Lips weigh 200 pounds or more. This load is counterbalanced with springs or shocks. Unlike the deck, which balances when it rises, the lip balances when it drops. It must return to the vertical position after a truck leaves. Hence, a 200-pound lip is supported with only about 180 pounds of lift. This reduces to just 20 pounds or so the force needed to raise the lip. Lips rise either when the decks rise or when the decks are lowered. Snubbing assemblies lift most lips as the decks rise. This mechanism consists of the lip driver, a chain or cable, and then the snubbing spring, which acts as a cushion. As the deck rises, the chain and spring pull the lip driver, which pivots and forces the lip up. Once the lip is elevated, it remains extended until the lip drops onto the back of the vehicle. Push bars lift the lips on many Kelly and right height levelers. On Kelly walkdown systems, when the deck rises, the push bar assembly in the rear of the pit drops and the bottom edge catches a bolt in the center of the link. Connected to the bottom bolt of the link is the inside end of the connecting rod. The other end of this is fastened to the lip lifter. As a person walks out on the deck, the link pivots and the connecting rod thrusts the lip upward as the deck lowers. Some right height levelers feature a cam secured to the underside of the deck with a pin. Attached to the same pin is the cross link. The other end of the cross link is connected to the pin on the inside end of the lip actuating link assembly. This pin rides inside the cam. As the deck rises, the cam pivots on a wheel and forces the link assembly to raise the lip. The lip must be raised as it is lowered onto the truck bed. Before the truck leaves, the deck is raised and the lip must drop to the vertical position when the deck is lowered. This is usually accomplished with shock absorbers, which allow the lip to close slowly. Another way is with the lip lock found on many levelers made, for example, by Kelly and Serco. As the deck rises, the snubber assembly raises the lip and the lip lock suspends the lip. The latching side is heavier than the snubbing side. When the lip is lowered onto the truck bed, the lip lifts and releases the lip lock. A third alternative is the Kelly push bar system. The lip rises as someone walks out to the edge of the deck, but when the lip meets the truck bed, the push bar releases the lip. On mechanical dock levelers, there is one exception to pulling a chain to raise a deck and standing on the edge of a deck to lower it. This is the motorized linear actuator Serco uses on some of their levelers. These permit the user to raise and lower the deck simply by pushing a button. Occasionally, it is necessary to accommodate vehicles with a lower bed height. To provide for this, mechanical levelers have adjustable safety legs. These normally stop the deck even with a floor. However, if the chain toward the outside of the deck is pulled, the safety legs move out of position, allowing the deck to drop further and to span the gap for the lower bed. Understanding how the various mechanisms function is the first step in learning to repair dock levelers. 
We hope this video has been helpful. I'm Dan Music. Thank you for watching.